All right, what do you have in your backpack? Just a little calico kitten. What? We had spent the past month and a half in the forest before having to evacuate due to a fire. Then, right after this, California shut down all forest camping, so we found ourselves without a place to go. We were unsure of where to head next, but since we were supposed to go back to the Bay Area in a few weeks anyway, we decided to call my aunt to see if we could bring our trailer back to her place, and she said yes. We also had a few repairs that needed to be done as soon as possible, so we'd have access to her power tools and a place to work. In only the first month or so of living in Dusty, we ran into a few issues. While driving down a bumpy road from one campsite to the next, our screen door came out and would need to be completely rebuilt as the wooden frame was damaged beyond repair. And before this, Della accidentally cracked our old propane line while attaching our propane tank setting up camp one day. Luckily, we had our camp stove so we can cook outside. Ironically, the screen door and the propane line are among the very few things that we didn't replace or refurbish in the initial build. Shortly after arriving at Della's aunt's house, I mistakenly backed into something and smashed the housing unit for our seven-way connector damaging the wiring. Because Della's aunt's housemate is extremely allergic to cats, and we weren't going to leave Marge in the trailer alone, we had to live out of Dusty while doing repairs, which made things a bit more complicated. Usually Marjorie would spend her days hanging out in the yard and we would check in on her frequently while we did repairs. Or sometimes when I had to work, I would do so on the porch and keep an eye on Marge while Della did repairs. Then we would all end the day in the trailer together when our workday was over. We decided that since the propane line was already very old and damaged, we might as well replace the whole thing. Neither of us had a clue on how to do this, so we began to do some research. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's in. We had a somewhat difficult time figuring out exactly what tools we needed to complete this task. But we were very lucky that on the day we went to the hardware store to look at supplies, there was an employee there that was very kind and helped us to figure out exactly what we needed. We proceeded to replace the entire line and improve on its functionality. We modified the length to work better for our purposes and added a gauge to the regulator that would help us see how much fuel we had left. Okay, I'm going to turn it on. I don't see any bubbles. I don't see any bubbles. Mm -mm. Next, I tackled the screen door reconstruction. I used the old pieces as a template to remake the parts out of new wood, and then stained and sealed all of the components to match the rest of the wood in the trailer. Wow. 
One issue we had with the screen door previously is that Marjorie once tore through the bottom corner of it when we were outside without her. One of her biggest pet peeves. So to remedy this, I riveted some grid wire to the frame on the outside bottom section of each panel to make it marge proof. Then, after screwing all of the parts together, I reinstalled it in the trailer, and added a little pull made out of extra copper pipe from the faucet build and an old piece of fabric. The last task to complete was the most daunting and involved the most work, which was the construction and installation of a fireproof box, and the installation of the wood stove itself. To construct the box, I framed out a three-sided box with 1x3s and secured each joint with corner braces and wood screws. Then I added some leftover plywood to each face of the box. the box, it needed to be installed permanently in the trailer before adding the tile. I put some cleats on the inside of the fiberglass cabinet and secured the box to the cabinet as well as directly into the floor. Giving up, heartbreak in mid-December, don't give up, getting lost in the big city. Marching's never permanent, but tonight it is killing me. <laughs> Then I began the process of tiling the box to make it fireproof. We didn't want to buy any unnecessary materials, and my aunt had a lot of extra tiles from various projects in wow, random so amounts. Nice. So that's why we decided to smash the tiles and do a mosaic technique. For the small section on top and the bottom part of the box, I accidentally used the wrong mortar. But I realized my mistake and used the proper one for the rest of the box. So far, we've had no issues with the tile staying adhered, even on all the bumpy roads we drive down, but we're crossing our fingers that it does stay intact.
man's name. Full uh, property uh, boundary sign. I love this sign. You do? Yeah. Oh. Nice. Seems like the locking one. They, and they were pressed up tightly. Okay. Uh, the nylon ones are closer to the end of the screw. I'm gonna have like just enough of these yellow boys, I think. Hey, hey. What are you doing? Why are we here, Scobby? We are getting one inch self tapping screws to secure our roof flashing, the wood burning stuff. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> paid off. Next, we tackled the most nerve wracking part, which was the installation of the stove itself that required us cutting a giant hole in our ceiling. It's about five inches? Yeah. It's a little bigger than seven, actually. That's fine. I'm gonna do the compass on the inside too, and it's at two and a half. Okay. We bought a seven-way unit and attempted to rewire it ourselves. Della tried twice, we tried together once, and then I tried again on my own, but we couldn't get the wiring in the car to match the wiring in the trailer. So we decided to take it to a shop. The guys at the shop spent eight hours trying, and they also had the same problem as us. So finally we took it back to the original shop where we took the trailer for a safety inspection back when we purchased it and they got it done in less than 30 minutes. While we were in the bay, Della's aunt also sewed us some awesome cow print covers for our bench cushions that could easily be taken off and washed. If we're being honest, we were pretty disappointed that after years of planning, months of renovation, and only a short period of actually traveling, we were already needing to halt our adventure to make repairs on Dusty. But after being frustrated about it for long enough, we started to appreciate what the experience gave us rather than fixate on what we perceived it took from us. Marge got to spend a lot of time exploring my aunt's garden and we got to spend an extended period of time with my aunt who we hadn't been able to see in over a year. We also got to spend extra time with Scobie's family and Marge got to hang with their cat Baxter who she's good friends with. We also had the chance to spend some more time with our amazing friends who we thought we wouldn't see again for over a year. This experience helped to show us that nothing in this life is black and white, and that the situations we go through are often much more nuanced than we realize. Because of this, we've learned that it's best to try to not judge a situation while it's still unfolding. I love 
There have been a lot of times in my life where I judged something that was happening to me as bad, only to realize later that what happened was actually a blessing in disguise. Or conversely, judging the situation as all good and then losing sight of reality. This has led to situations blowing up in my face on more than one occasion. Even during the times in our lives that feel easy, we try to acknowledge that the lessons we learn are a spiral, meaning there are likely more layers to them that have yet to come. So we think that inner work we do on ourselves should not be looked at as having an end goal we aim to achieve, but rather as an art that we continually practice at. This is not to say that any of the hardships we suffer are justified, but something we can do to get through them is to learn and grow from the complications that are thrown our way. We think that it's our destiny to find joy within our lives in this physical world and believe that remaining present in these moments is the key to this endeavor. I don't have it. No, no. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Am I you? No, it's fine. <laughs> Ooh. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, You're okay. On.